WWV on 5 megahertz. Hey guys, Fred here of the E3FL, Ontario Northwest Bushcrafter and Outdoors. And it is Thanksgiving uh, Monday here today in Canada, <laughs> I guess is what I should say. Um, so I showed you guys a quick video yesterday of my Yesu FRG Frog 7 listening to 20 meters on the handband. Uh, as I said though, I have an issue with some of the lamps that are burnt out. So, this is the first part, I guess, of a bit of my refurbishment and my retrofit, uh, trying to get this major awesome radio back in service. Um, back in high school we had a Frog 7 that we would sign out on the weekends. Um, myself, Ed Mackey, Mr. Kimpton who was our electronics teacher, uh, there were a bunch of us that were heavy in the shortwave and I mean we would take this thing home on the weekends sign it out and do some listening I mean we were we were in a short wave when we were when we were younger uh, like you would not believe I mean we would do everything stay up all night trying to catch that exotic station in the Pacific in Asia uh, to get that QSL card and to verify it and have that card in our pockets and the ASU FRG Frog 7 was that receiver so this is the Cadillac this is the tank um, of radios. So I'm trying to fix it up. I'm hoping to get things fixed up. It does work well on receive. Um, I just got to change out some of the lights that are burnt out in the pre-select and in megahertz uh, section. So this is the first part of the retrofit. I've taken the screws out of the cover. I've taken the screws out for the lights. So we're going to go from there and uh, we'll keep you guys up to date. All right, so I got the uh, outside uh, cover protector off, and I've taken the screws out for the lamps. So these are the four lamps. I know that the um, top and bottom are working, uh, but I'm going to change them all out. And if we look on this side, uh, we can see some of the glue. Looks like some of the lamps have got pretty warm over time. So we're going to swap these guys out, clean up some solder connections, and uh, see what we can do from this point on. All right, so I'm going to change out some bulbs. Uh, I know that two of the four on this side are working. None are working on this side. So... I'm going to go to the back, I'm going to get some clippers, uh, wire clippers, wire snips. Um, I'm going to get the bulbs from my radio room slash office. Uh, because I am old and my eyes are no longer that great and I do need bifocals, uh, I have the extra light magnifying glass. I'll plug my soldering iron in here in just a bit. I'll get the uh, desoldering tool and we're going to change at least the bulbs out in the megahertz dial and the pre-select dial. Okay, that's the game plan. I am going to use my phone to take pictures of where the wires go in this direction here so that if a wire comes off, I don't mess it up. All right, I know what order they go in. And I'm going to change the bulbs out there. The only other two bulbs that I may have a little bit of a struggle with are under the main dial, but I think I can take the protective cover off the uh, capacitor underneath, the tuning capacitor, and I should be able to pull them out and change those bulbs too, but tonight I just want to do these ones. I'm not worried so much about the dial one right now, and I believe I have some other ones in the back uh, that I can put onto the radio. So I'm going to run to the back, grab my wire clippers and I'll catch up with you guys here in just a little bit. 
All right, so soldering iron is warming up. I got the soldering station. I have the small replacement bulbs that I'm going to replace. I already took pictures of the megahertz and pre-selector dial. So I'm going to change these guys out first and I'll see what happens and I'll see about doing the main dial uh, after I'm done. Um, I've got four, five, six bulbs, eight. I believe here there's 12, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's 10 bulbs here uh, that I had ordered online uh, quite some time ago actually. Uh, but of course I'm getting into the itch to listen to shortwave again after many many years. Um, my other radios do a, a great job um, at it. I have a couple of other shortwave radios in the back that I need to restore as well. I have to do the same kind of work to them. Uh, put some new knobs on, different things, clean up uh, capacitors, you name it. Uh, tuning capacitors, uh, potentiometers, uh, things like that. Spray them with some cleaner, some air. I get them up and running. Um, I have like a national back there. I have a couple of other radios. Um, an I is it an ICO? I can't remember now offhand. Sorry. Um, that I need to get restored. I also have a couple of older uh, AM FM shortwave radios. I have a cathedral style and I have a death or a floor model uh, that I want to restore as well. But uh, I just miss the days of listening to shortwave on an old analog radio. Um, so. That's what I want to do. I want to get this radio up and running. I want to get it so I can listen to shortwave again and put myself back into my teenage years <laughs> just listening to radio. I know half the stations are gone that used to be there, but that's not the point. It'll be nice to see this radio up and running and listening to Radio Van Cuba at night, uh, BBC, uh, Voice of America, even the African shows in the afternoon, uh, just to kind of bring me back to the, uh, the good old days. All right, so I'm going to get at it. All right, I went and got my desoldering tool um, to help get the solder off. I've got the lance. I got the soldering iron ready to go to the soldering station. I got my solder over there. I got a great big kick-ass pumpkin here. So we're going to do some light bulb changes. Um, the other radio I have in the back is an Allied Night Star Roamer. That's the other shortwave that I have. And then I have another one back there too. So I've got a couple of them I want to revive, get up on the shelf, and start doing some listening. All right, I'm going to get this show on the road. All right, let the games begin. So, see what we can do. So first things first. That's on solder. I think I'm going to have to I just want to get solder in here. Take the brown wire off. Let's pull this little protective cover off the bulb. Not sure if I really need those. I know it helps to make it a little less brighter. All right, so what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to get a clamp to hold this in place. So I'm going to go get one of my clamps uh, to hold that so I can unsolder it and I'll be right back. Alright, we're going to try this again. 
This time I went and got my soldering assistant here. And I think what I'm going to have to do, I'm going to turn the radio sideways, bring the light in. This guy over, just like so. All right, we'll see if that helps me or hinders me. And I always have this other light here. I need it. Not sure you guys can see. It's got it pulled out of here. There we go. It's one bulb out. Just gonna get a small screwdriver. I have some dental tools, but I'm going to grab a small screwdriver there to make sure that everything in between is cleaned out. Just want to make sure that in between is clean, in between the traces. Looks okay. out how these bulbs are connected here. Look at some of the pictures. Let's see here. Look at this guy. Alright, so yeah. The brown wire. So that's got its own trace. All right. Yeah, they're pretty easy to see. Just double checking, guys. It happens when you get old. Bulb number one shall be fitted. One trace there, one trace there. Solder this one on first, right here. Okay. Those smaller clippers, just got to find them. Okay. Solder that one on.
There we go. So the brown wire, once I'm done changing the lights, we'll go to here. All right, so that's the process. So I'm going to turn you guys off. I'm going to finish this up near the end. I'll turn you guys back on and we'll go from there. All right. All right, the moment of truth. I believe these are 12 volt lamps. Um, I think what it required though in here originally was like 9 point, I think it said here on the board, thought it did 9.6 volt lamps or something. So here's going to be a little bit dimmer. However, um, it's better than no light at all. So let's turn the power on. Let's turn the lights on. So I am on the top band 11 to 29. So that'll be at the top, uh, 4 to 11, 1.6 to 4, and 0.5 to 1.6. So I'm happy with that. By the time it's inside here, I'll be able to see. So now it's time to tackle these two bad boys and see what I've got going on here. All right, so I'm just gonna put these guys back. Put the screws back in, and we'll see what it looks like, I guess. Now, hopefully, the ones that I didn't put. The covers on, or the light condoms as I call them, aren't going to look too bad. Again, though, a little bit of light is going to be better than no light. Navigate around these wires here and get holes lined up. And of course, not pinch any wires. And cause a short. It's the last thing that we want. All right, so we got the orange wires clear. All right, so the only other thing I have to put back on before I put the cover on is, of course. The outside protector. Shut my soldering iron off. Move it out of the way. So let's get all this other stuff out of the way. The old bulbs, the wire ends, solder. Let's get that all out of the way as well. Before I throw those out. So I have four bulbs left. I still need two more for the display for the main dial. Uh, where's the light switch? And turn that off. Alright. Plug this guy in. Let's grab the camera if we can. All right, power on, light on, so, all 
Well, it appears to be working. At least I have light behind there. The yeah, that works. That looks pretty good too. So looking straight at the radio, I can see what band I'm on on a pre-selector. Turn the light out in the house here. All right, so we can get down here a little bit. All right, so our megahertz uh, dial is lit up. As we go through here on the uh, pre-select. So we're good. So that works out quite well. So I'm happy with that. Okay, and then of course our pre-select, or I mean our megahertz works. And it's lit up so I can actually see the uh, lock and unlock button work. Too, which I'm happy with. Alright. I know it's a little sensitive, but it does work, which is good. So the only other thing I have to do now is the uh, dial light. So I'll change the dial light bulbs next, and then uh, we're going to go from there. So the bulbs are changed in the Frog 7, so that's one project out of the way. We'll do the dial lights next, and uh, then we're going to be able to uh, operate the poor radio here and uh, get it uh, up and running on the bands. So thanks for watching guys, this is Fred, VE3FAL, Ontario Northwest Bushcraft Real Outdoors, 7-3 guys. Alright, so I opted to put the light condoms back on. I'm kind of glad I did because I have a cold soldering joint right here on this light. So I need to touch that up. So I just turned my soldering iron back on, I'll let it heat up a bit more. I will fix that soldering connection, that joint right here. And I will put these guys back in, and then uh, we'll go from there. WWV on 5 megahertz.